Do you think this was the right game for him to jump back into things after having such a serious injury? In hindsight, Molly, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no, because I think that when you looked at Drew Brees, obviously uh, Kansas City got out to a lead, and we know that the score indicated that it was closer. Uh, you know, they came back. We understand that. They scored 15 unanswered points. But in the end, Kansas City was able to do what it does. Offensively, we knew that was going to happen because you got Patrick Mahomes with Tyreek Hill with Travis Kelsey and the crew. Defensively, even though they're not, uh, you know, one of the elite defenses in the game, I do think it's obvious that they're a bit better than they were last year. And I do think that when you look at Drew Brees, not just his rust, but the stationary target that he is, I think one of the Kansas City Chiefs alluded to before the game that he was easier to prepare for because as great as he is as a passer, he sort of limited mobility-wise, and as a result, in terms of game planning, they wouldn't have to be overly concerned with what he brought to the table. Well, lo and behold, that's exactly what ended up happening because even though he ended up throwing, what was it, 234 yards, 15 to 34, that's not Drew Brees at all. He's far more accurate than that normally. That's less than 50% completions of his passes. But more importantly than that, it's not like he's going to run the football. He didn't even attempt to rush with the football. Taysom Hill would have been another matter. And as a result, I think that would have made things considerably more difficult for the Kansas City Chiefs, and that's why I come to that conclusion. They absolutely did not make a mistake starting Drew Brees. They had to start Drew Brees. Look, the fact of the matter is the Saints are playing right now not just to win this game, but they're playing for first place in the NFC because there's only one bye per conference. And that team that plays in a dome, climate controlled, it's one thing to play on the road, it's another thing to play on the frozen tundra. And there's a good chance that that's where they wind up playing. They have to try to avoid that. They also have to get Drew Brees ready for the playoffs. This is likely the last time he'll be able to make a run. He was thinking about retiring last year. There's a good chance this is <coughs> it for Drew Brees, especially coming off a punctured lung and 11 crushed, refractured ribs and the whole thing. You got to get him going for the playoffs. But more than that, they believed he gave them the best chance to win this football game. And I think they're right. It's not like Taysom Hill beat the Eagles the week before. And this idea, well, whenever backups start, they do better, have a better winning percentage than Drew Brees. Do we really believe that his backups are better than him? Or is that just a small sample size? Or the phenomenon where guys feel like they need to step up, especially if it's just a game or two, when there's a backup? No. Drew Brees, one of the greatest of all time, looking to add another Super Bowl to his resume on the maybe the team that gives him the best chance to do it since his first Super Bowl win, should have started this game. He did. And in the end, look, most Chiefs games, the score, if it's a little close, it doesn't really tell the story. The Chiefs were the better team. Still, it was one field goal. And that was without Michael Thomas. No Michael Thomas. Like, we've been waiting for Breeze to have his full complement of receivers the entire season. The whole thing about Emmanuel Sanders, you have a great number one, and now you have a real number two. It's not Kamara. You can still use out of the backfield, but he doesn't have to be the second best receiver on the team. Once again, Drew Brees didn't have his full complement of receivers. I can't look at the outcome of this game where Brees looked confused at times. Like he really, all that tells me is he needs to get his feet wet in a game like that. And he was competitive and so was the team. And with Michael Thomas, who knows? I think the Chiefs win anyway, anyway but who knows? It was the right move. Well, first of all, I'm, I, I get where you're coming from, Max, and, and not to be hypocritical here because last week I was talking about, hell, you go, you bring Drew Brees back. He's Drew Brees. I'm not running from what my initial sentiments were. What I'm saying is, in hindsight, looking at this game and, imagine, and, and, and witnessing, rather, what transpired, it just really rubbed me the wrong way. First of all, Michael Thomas didn't play. You're absolutely right. That's his number one target. That's somebody he's incredibly fond of, obviously has strong familiarity with cohesiveness, chemistry, et cetera, et cetera. So you didn't have him there. So since you didn't have him there, that's even more of a reason, not less, but even more of a reason not to play Drew Brees because, again, he's a stationary target. He's rusty because he's been out the previous 
previous four weeks or so. Then on top of it all, you don't have your number one overall weapon. And a guy like Taysom Hill, you got a guy that's a, through, a dual threat because he can throw the football well enough, but he certainly can run with the football. And as a result of his ability to run with the football, that causes the Kansas City Chiefs some problems on the defensive side of the floor or the sense of defensive end of the field. So that's just how I'm looking at it from that perspective. I get where you're coming from. I'm just of the mindset that looking at Drew Brees, having had him been out, looking at his rust, the fact that he didn't have his primary target, and that he himself is a stationary target for opposing defenses, because the last thing you have to worry about is him scrambling. I just think when you look at it from that perspective, they might have been better off going with Taysom Hill. Look, Taysom Hill ran it in in the red zone. They still used Taysom Hill, and that's the value of the experience Taysom Hill just got. When Taysom Hill's on the field, if he's on the field with Drew Brees, anything can happen now. Because we know he can read defenses, he can throw, he can run, he can do anything you need him to do. He can catch all at acceptable or better levels. It's not a knock against Taysom Hill, and he may really be the quarterback of the future for that team, and they did well with him. But I don't believe they're a better team with Taysom Hill than with Drew Brees. I don't think Sean Payton believes that right now. And furthermore, in the NFL, in a full contact sport like this, the idea of culture setting, of loyalty, of those kind of things really does matter when all the chips are on the line in the playoffs. I think Sean Payton, on top of everything I said, if Drew Brees is ready to go, is showing the team in the world He's our guy. He can get us there. That's also an important message to send. I really believe, in addition to that, Breeze did give them the best chance to win. By the way, they scored 29 points. For a 40-year-old quarterback who looked confused by the defense at times and is coming back from a huge series of injuries, really, your, your team scored 29 points. That's not so bad. And, and I'd rather him get more experience or, or, or more rhythm heading to the playoffs than less. They had to win this game. They came up short. They probably would have come up short if Taysom Hill started too. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.